So I've had this nine months now, and I wanted to go over some things that you'll want to know and things such as, you know, your wheel offset, um, things that I would do and not do. This machine, you know, before we even get started, I absolutely love this machine. And if I had to do it over again, I, I'm glad that I purchased this machine. As of right now, I do not plan on switching um, I'm hopeful that Can-Am or one of the others will come out with a competitor to it. But as far as our woods rig, um, I absolutely love this. The things that, uh, make this so great is it's excellent in the woods, especially for a family. If you're a couple that has two kids or one kid or whatever, you know, other machines without a cab, um, they just, you know, you can only ride them seasonal and be fully comfortable. So if you're looking at this and you're wondering, Hey, is this worth the money for me to take in the woods with my family? Well, most people it's going to be, you know, you know, do you want to spend that much money on one of these? But if you're in that range and you don't care to spend the money, this is by far the best cabbed woods machine we have ever had. It, it goes extremely well. And another thing I want to tell you, so if you're looking at this or you're looking at the ADV model, and the ADV model doesn't have the dump bed, and it, its cab goes all the way back straight out and comes back here. So this is enclosed, and then you, you just have a see-through area right here so you know you've got the seats but then you can just go back into the bed it's kind of like a camper shell for trucks um the only thing that i would say is if you're woods riding in an adv and it's really tight woods you know this has a bunch of blind spots and then also your cab if you're used to a razor or um you know something of that nature if you look at this cab, it does curve in more than a Defender or a Ranger, but it does not curve in like a Razor. The problem you get into is when you're in tight woods and you're riding in tight woods, the longer your cab with all this glass, the more you have to worry about. And for instance, let's say that I was sitting going through the woods and I've got a tree here, a tree over here, it's really close. And then I've got another one right up here that when I'm going to turn, it's going to shift my body over. So I don't have to look as much because I've got this cab right here as I would with the ADV. Because the longer that you are, the more cab is kicked over. And the more when you start to turn, it's really hard to explain. But I personally would not want the ADV for really tight woods riding. And it's, it's nothing against it. I mean, I really liked ADV, but it's just not, um, in my, in my mind, this one has enough things that you can hit the cab on. And I have already rubbed my whole cab roof and everything on the sides of things. If you go back and you watch our wildcat video of us taking this to wildcat, I mean, we had this thing so off camber that <laughs> it was, it was shoving us in the, you know, side of hillsides. So, you know, you just have to be a lot more careful with an ADV one. That brings me to the next thing. If you're, if you're getting this to, you know, woods ride, this is a big machine. It's a heavy machine. When you start loading it up with mud and you get it into a really deep spot, I noticed that the 4,500 pound winch, which what comes on them, uh, it will struggle in a lot of scenarios when you get this thing in there. And I mean, this thing's almost 3,000 pounds. So you would think that the 4,500 pound winch would pull it no problem. But when you bury this thing like we did, we buried the whole front tire off in a mud hole and it did not want to budge us hardly either way. It finally got us out. But I think that upgrading to the 6,000 pound winch, uh, especially if you have to ride alone, we don't really ride big areas alone we go with groups and stuff so you know i'm fine with it but if you ride more alone and you're planning on doing really treacherous things with this um upgrading to the six thousand pound winch would probably be a good thing to look into 
The uh, next thing that I would tell you, if you're coming from a Razor or, you know, a, a Can Am Maverick or something like that, this thing, it goes extremely well until you're on a slope, like an embankment like this, and then you have to turn, like if you're going up the hill and you've got to turn like this and then go back up. So this, you know, this doesn't do sideways extremely well. And if you look at the turntable when it's gonna flip, I think it's around 35 degrees is where this expedition is, you know, set at. So when you put 32s on it, which is what I would do, and I put five plus two wheels. If I had it to do over again, I would do four plus three all day. And you can see that these aren't sticking out very far past the cab. A four plus three would give you one more inch out on both sides, giving you another two inches of width. So if you're looking at these, a, five, a four plus three would be the best wheel offset for this machine. You know, unless you're just planning on doing wide travel and a whole bunch of other stuff, I would, you know, I would add 32s and I would do a four plus three. Some people say that you can put 33s on this. Um, but from everything that I've seen, some 33s rub. I would not want mine to be off camber or to get in any position to where it would rub and mess up. So, you know, as far as factory, I know that every 32 inch tire will fit and a four plus three would give you a great width. Now, um, other than that, as far as it, you know, being capable, you could absolutely throw 32s on this from the factory and go a whole lot of places. I mean, it's a, a really, really good machine and it goes so well. I have really, really enjoyed this machine. The other thing that I would add is, you know, the brakes on this work pretty decent. I'm not for sure why they didn't put drilled and slotted rotors on this. I, I can't really understand um, what the thinking was on that, but that's how they come from the factory. Most machines, you can look in here, most time your rotor is drilled, which lets heat dissipate and your pad lasts longer and get better, you know, grip. So I, I don't know the thinking behind that, but other than that, I think it's an extremely beefy design machine. And you can go back and look at my other videos, but the A-arms are bigger than just about anything from the factory. The rear A-arms are boxed and they're absolutely massive. So, you know, you can go back and look at all that. The problems, that I've had out of this, I haven't had any problems whatsoever as far as like mechanical issues. Um, I did have this heat shield to flake over on this side, which all of them do. And I've heard that even the secondary ones, so they replaced mine for free, that even the secondary ones are having issues. So there's some aftermarket companies that make these. Um, I just had this one put on probably three three weeks ago, four weeks ago, something like that. I can't even remember, but they put a brand new one on for free. It was under warranty. I did not get the extended warranty on this. To me, extended warranties on a machine are a waste of money, in my opinion. And a lot of you are going to have, you know, totally different ideas and outlooks on it. That's fine. I can do almost anything myself and I don't know what that I couldn't do on here for the cost, unless a motor went out on it, which is a possibility. But like I said, I've never had that issue. I'm not gonna say you won't, but I, I don't get the extended warranties on them. As far as the inside of this machine, you know, the things that I've seen across the board as a, a complaint is the, um, noise in the cab and and i do wish that they would have did a better job sound deadening this cab uh if you are in the back it's a lot louder than the front but it does echo 
and they have come out with a clutch kit for it and it does make a significant difference in this machine so if you get the clutches which is in here swapped out to different rollers it will change your shift and you will lose power over the rpm range so it will not be as fast um, as it is now but it is a whole lot less cab noise so some of you might want to look into that if you've got one of these or you're about to pick one up if you want it to be quieter in the cab and you don't care to you know sacrifice just a little bit of power over your rpm range they have a kit it's totally free you just call the dealer tell them you want them to put it in drop it off and it's a polaris recall that is um available across the board so anybody can get it if you've got one of these you bought one in the beginning you can get that put in absolutely free from your dealer uh, which is super good to polaris it seems like they're really listening on these another thing i would highly highly recommend getting rock sliders now these are the factory ones but i'm going to show you just for instance you know we we trail ride some pretty hard trails and you can see here look at this big dent i've already put in this thing and that would have been in my plastic uh these have saved me time and time again um they do clunk when you hit something but other than that as far as them being functional those are just the factory polaris ones i really like them i enjoy them they work really well another thing i would recommend is adding these rear shocks to this machine this machine rides so well from the factory but these give your sway bar just a little bit more leeway it's about one inch more up and down to give you that sway so when you're off camber it'll let it shift with the terrain so that to me is something i would add to all of them and i've got a video on that if you guys are looking into that and <laughs> that's something i i really like um if you don't know these machines have the shock where you can change the you know compression ratio and everything that's super handy other than that on the outside i absolutely think that the inside of this machine they knocked out of the park um i really don't have anything the only one of the main things i think but you know besides the cab noise is i wish they would put um the boot somehow put a boot on here even if it was just a short one because this lets a little bit of dust come through and every ride there's dust on this stuff and on here it does take it a while but um if you get in real dusty scenarios dust comes out of that and i've seen a lot of people retrofitting uh, several different ones uh inside here and everything the cab of this does have a lot of blind spots and that is a complaint of mine but i really don't know what they would do about it unless they switched up the entire design so you know they would have to take all your inlet your your clutch inlet intake spots and everything and move all that somehow but once you get used to it you don't really have an issue but if you're coming from like an open cab razor or a maverick or something like that you're gonna feel like you're, you're gonna feel like you can't see anything in one of these it, it just it's it's got wide pillars in everywhere so you know it's not like a razor that has that little skinny bar like this little piece and this piece you have them it feels like you're in a jeep that's that's really how it feels and like i said it takes some getting used to so if you're looking into one of these and you've got a razor or something like that like i said go test drive one make sure it's something for you because a lot of people aren't going to like the blind spots but if you're a family this makes your life so great we go and and ride in it all day and then take the kids put their car seats in it you can fit car seats in the front right here you cannot fit them in the rear now we put boosters for my son but other than that you can't fit a regular car seat like a baby seat you can fit car seats like the setup car seats like in this 
you can fit these in the back. But if you've got a baby, like a little baby, that is in the, the little carrier, it only fits in the front. So that's something to keep in mind. Other than that, I've added accessories uh, to it. I've got videos on that. The machine, to me, <clears throat> has great power delivery. It's got smooth driving. Um, and in the woods, you know, you can ride in high, even with 32s. And, you know, you don't really use low that much. I mean, the high in it is so smooth. You can, you can put it in high with 32s and drive it like two to three mile an hour with the gas. So if you're in a, if you're in a vehicle right now and you don't know what I'm talking about and you, you go and get like a, a razor or something like that and you put it in high, um, they're jumpy and get to go one to three mile an hour, usually you've got to really peg them and kind of let out and then coast. And like, so this machine's clutching is very, very good, especially for woods riding. Uh, I don't think this would be a dune machine by any means. It just, you know, it's not in that horsepower range. You could probably do it, but this is a heavy, heavy machine compared to about everything, except for a Ranger 1500. But this weighs more than a Defender. It weighs more than a Ranger. Um, it is shorter and nimbler. And I think that anybody that got one of these would absolutely love it. You guys can let me know down in the comments what you think, but as far as me owning one of these, I would go and buy this again today if mine burnt. I absolutely love it. The ride command's great. The uh, clutching, all that stuff is great. Like I said, you got cab noise and a few other things, but they would have to do some extensive stuff on this. Also, another thing, if you guys don't know, this is pretty cool. So you've got these little movable you can move these anywhere you want for your windshield washer fluid you can move them little eyes to shoot all over that window in different spots thank you guys for watching hope you have a good day